morning, everybody. Um, we are going to get started. We have our quorum and hope others will join in. It is 832, so I'm calling the meeting to order. Pursuant to the Illinois Attorney General's guidance to public bodies on the Open Meetings Act during the COVID-19 pandemic, dated July 2nd, 2020, county board members may participate without being physically present in compliance with the established provisions. And we have Lynn LaPlante in the room this morning. <laughs> so I'm very happy to have her here this morning. Can I have a roll call, please? Member Puchowski. Vice Chair Chaplin. Member Hart. Here. Member LaPlante. Here. <laughs> Member Chavez. Here. And Chair Rutledge. Here. Uh, thanks everybody for being here this morning. It is spring. Oh my goodness, I'm bordering on summer today. Uh, but what a great day for uh, election day. Um, some very interesting things on our agenda today. Um, one of the things that, that kind of, of course, environmentally is um, I, I heard somebody give me a, an idea that I liked. I, I'm all about getting rid of grass and trying to feed the pollinators. And uh, in that vein, uh, people suggested something called no mow may. <laughs> so if you have a lot of lawn weeds, Try not to mow until late May. Think about the middle of May is when you can finally start planting flowers in your yard after the threats of frost have passed. Uh, but in the meantime, the bees are already emerging and have nowhere to feed uh, if we don't leave those dandelions and, and clover to stand. So I'm giving all the men and the women too um, an opportunity to have a good excuse for not mowing their lawn in May. So uh, that's one of the things I wanted to talk about this morning. And the other thing I'm going to talk about coming up and I didn't get together is the problem in our sewer lines with all of the wipes that are being thrown down toilets into the sewers. Uh, massive chunks of those in the sewer lines, something that I'd like to take a look at and, and bring awareness to. So uh, with that, do we have any public comment this morning? No. Alrighty, I will move for approval of minutes from our Tuesday, March 2nd, 2021 meeting. So moved. Second. Seven. Um, roll call, please. And stop and think. Member Chavez. Aye. Member Hart. Aye. Uh, Member Pachowski. Member plant aye vice chair chaplain and chair rutledge aye so that item carries uh for parent committee approval i'll move on enr 021521 a resolution to promote sustainable outdoor lighting practices within county operations so moved hard Second. We, uh, we had a first and a second. Great. Uh, roll call, please. I want to hear from Adam. I'm sorry. Yes. Thank you. Thank you, Joy. Michelle, can you log in, Adam, so he can give us a quick five minute intro to Dark Skies? Yes, I absolutely want to hear from Adam. <laughs> Good morning, Adam. Thank you for coming today. Uh, can you need to unmute? Good morning. Can you hear me now? Thank you. Well, thanks so much for having me. Thank you, Joy, for putting this all together. And uh, Liz, I believe you were the chairperson when I presented initially. And um, thank you very much to the current chair, Sheila, for having me. Um, this resolution is terrific. I don't know who drafted it, but I think it says pretty much everything. So kudos to um, this commission to uh, not only putting this together, but hopefully presenting it well and obtaining our signature from uh, Mr. Cronin. So um, I just wanna emphasize on behalf of the International Dark Sky, 
Association and I am your local delegate that we are available. So to the extent that you might need us to present to um, Mr. Cronin, um, if you need us to provide you with additional information moving forward, uh, any level of assistance, auditing, um, any kind of programs that you might try to design and implement to better inform uh, the residents within this county, I'm available to everybody to help as best we can. So um, again, I'm very much excited about the resolution and to the extent that anybody might have any questions about uh, what the International Dark Sky does, the association does, or what we can do for you in the future, um, I can feel those questions now. Questions, anybody? I'll just say awareness is a wonderful thing. I've got a couple of uh, motion lights or those AM, PM lights on my property and I'm looking at them going, all right, they're just spraying light all over the place. So I'll be looking to replace those very soon. Yeah, you know, the LED technology has advanced tremendously from when I think the county was first introduced to LED lights. And we now have the opportunity through the new technologies to reduce the color temperature on our bulbs without any additional expenses. The efficacy of uh, those bulbs is uh, on par with any other bulbs that you've purchased in the past or can purchase in the future. Um, the 2700 Kelvin, the warm white, certainly is what I've been emphasizing during all my webinars that I've been presenting, including way back with Kay. I think Kay might be with us today. Thank you, Kay, so much for helping to introduce this topic too. Um, with the new technology, we do have better motion sensors available. We do have better opportunities to uh, put all the lights on all your systems on timers so that you can dim the brightness levels um, when appropriate for your particular environment. So. Almost with every month, we've got better, better technology available with these LEDs, which of course is, is saving everybody tons of money and reducing um, those greenhouse gases, which certainly your resolution emphasizes. Great. Thank you, Adam. I appreciate your joining us this morning. Um, so if we can uh, have a vote, please. Member LaPlante? Aye. Member Hart? Aye. Um, Member Puchowski, Vice Chair Chaplin. Member Chavez? Aye. And Chair Rutledge? Aye. Motion carries. Thank you. Uh, next on our agenda is a discussion about Senate Bill 170 and House Bill 633, the Vegetable Garden Protection Act. Um, I will open by saying I have, I did get a call yesterday from the mayor of Elmhurst that has been embroiled in, in some of this for quite some time. And I do 100% support the right of people to garden, but I am listening to the municipalities on this. Um, as I, I hear their concern about it, you know, overruling home rule. So uh, I'll open the discussion with that. If anybody has anything they'd like to add. I think that was just my biggest concern in looking at this was what impact will it have on the governance of such an ordinance? So um, I just feel like the impact on our municipalities may be great as people try to figure out how they're going to implement more sustainable living in their homes, but it might impact, you know, the look of neighborhoods and, and there, there just may have to be future looks at, you know, what it looks like to have sustainability and growing your own food in your neighborhood. Um, and I think it will have some impact on our municipalities and I just don't yet know, have a grasp yet of how big that is. So Greg, you're kind of nodding your head. Got anything to add there? <laughs> no, I, I, I would uh, I would agree. I mean, I, I, Chair Rutledge, as you said, uh, I kind of have a similar point of view. I fully support the rights of homeowners to uh, do what they want to do on their property. And that includes, uh, you know, sustainable living. That includes gardening. Uh, but this does have an impact on our municipal stakeholders. So before I personally would take a position one way or the other, I'd like to hear more input from them um, because there's probably 
points of view that uh, we aren't considering without their their input. So uh, definitely interested in this issue, but that's kind of where I fall right now. Uh, so I agree with, with you and, and uh, Member Chavez. Lynn, you got anything you want to add? You know, I would love to hear, is it possible for you to share some of your conversation that you had yesterday? Yeah, his, um, oh goodness, my notes are that it's a blanket zoning issue. It's not just a gardening issue. It overrules home rule. Um, I can't read that. Um, that that like a 10 by 10 by six foot structure would be okay in his municipality. He even talks about he's, you know, he's for gardening. You can put a garden in your front yard right up to the sidewalk in Elmhurst, but it's these these larger structures that he really has a problem with. Um, I would say that, and and part of his opinion is that it's a poorly written bill that needs some work before he can get behind it. And I, I think I kind of fall right in there too that I think they need to kind of work on this a little bit before uh, we can go ahead and pass it at a county level. I'm, I'm definitely leaning towards supporting something like this. Uh, but for right now, I think our best way forward is to listen and, and not make a judgment either way just yet. Anybody else? Good. Um, and we don't need any vote any there. Okay, so staff reports, moving on. Um, can I, excuse me, can absolutely. I go just a little bit to, yes. to talk a little bit more? So is it possible that we come up with a, like maybe a list of concerns and that, that we get them addressed much more specifically? Because um, I'm hearing, you know, I, I get it. I get both sides here that um, yeah. we have yeah. to be concerned with, but in terms of, um, us having a little bit more of a cohesive like idea. We really don't like X, Y, Z. We need you know, to make everyone happy. Is there a way that we can delve a little deeper into that? Well, we certainly have an opportunity to reach out to the, the authors of the right. bills, uh, expressing our concerns. Um, Joy, if you've got anything you want to add to that, maybe communications yeah. that you have we're not aware of. Sure, we can talk to the DuPage mayors and managers and find out if they've come up with any sort of um, amending language mm -hmm. or any yeah. recommendations. Typically, when bills are you know are pending, mm -hmm. most organizations come up with like a one pager. Here's what we like about it. Here's what we don't like about it. Here's some suggested changes. So, absolutely, I'll talk to Cheryl and find out okay. kind of what they've come up with. I don't know where the Illinois Association of Counties has fallen on this. I think they are opposed, as okay. are the mayors and managers. So why don't I talk to Cheryl and see if we can reach out to our lobbyists and some of these organizations and see if we can get a little I, bit I do think it, that we need to address their concerns on this bill before we come down either side of it. Um, so uh, while I think the, the consensus is to be supportive of something like this, I think that we need to figure out our stakeholders' positions and concerns and uh, before we decide something like this. Yeah, I would, I would love that. That would be something that would be, I think, maybe help us all be much more informed. And then maybe perhaps we can help um, influence mm -hmm. um, the differences to get it where, where everyone is happy. Because I think this is so hugely important and obviously something that people did. We did a competitive gardening in our neighborhood <laughs> during oh, the pandemic. Oh, oh. <laughs> we did, there was nothing else to do. All sports were canceled. So we were like, all right, I'm going to grow these tomatoes then, you know? And so it was amazing. It was something that our whole community talked about, you know, like it, people put it on social media. It was fantastic. We built a whole new vegetable garden construction thing in our backyard. So I really feel passionately about the importance of having something like this. We all learned a lot this past year about what it's like to be at home and grow your own food. Um, but I think there's a way that we, if we can finesse it and make it, um, yeah more palatable for everyone. I would love to dive deeper. Well, ultimately it may be out of our hand, right. but um, right. I like the competitive garden yes, idea right. actually. <laughs> let's do, you know, let's hit it about July, first yeah. of August and give out prizes for, yeah, you we'll know. Like a March, a July madness bracket. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, I like that idea actually. That could be kind of fun. <laughs> All righty. Uh, thank you, Lynn. Uh, great ideas. I really like that. Um, staff reports, please. Uh, the DuPage County 2020 Annual Waste Recycling Report. Good morning. Good morning. 
All right, so in your packet, you have the um, 2020 annual uh, waste and recycling report. This is an annual report that we develop every year. We survey all of our municipalities in DuPage County. So the prior year, the annual year that we have, we do have up on our website and are posted. So what you have is a draft in your packet right now of the report. So some of the highlights of the report, we received responses from 25 communities. This is optional. Um, it's, we do seek their input, but they receive a questionnaire. Um, based on uh, specifics that we're looking for, mainly what are the recycling practices, waste practices, how much waste and recycling are they taking in? So we asked about tonnage. Um, so some of the highlights that we have is um, from the 25 communities, we have 237,283, sorry, <laughs> 237,000 um, tons of refuse, just about, and then 80,000 tons of recycling. That's curbside recycling that's been taken in, um, which averages out to about 32% uh, average recycling rate for the county overall. So some fall higher with their recycling rate, some fall lower. Um, so how we calculate that is taking the waste and the recycling and landscape waste, so everything collected at the curb, and then doing some calculations with that. Um, other things that might be of interest is that uh, we did, food scrap has been a, um, a large concern around here. So um, we always do ask about food scrap. So in 2020, eight communities responded that they had food scrap collection programs. In 2021, nine communities will or are planning on implementing um, food scrap collection. And then the other thing that we asked this year, which was not in prior years, um, we did ask about communities focus. So what are they planning on focusing on? What are their concerns going into 2021 that they will be focusing on? So the top one was contamination at the residential curbside. So that would be um, looking at inside the recycling bin at your curbside, trying to deal with the contamination there. The other one was plastics. Uh, so that can cover anything from the types of plastics that they're receiving in the curbside bin to packaging plastics and dealing with that. Um, HHW, so our household hazardous waste, was another one that was ranked right up there, and then food scraps um, came in just slightly lower. So, but those will be the focuses of our communities within DuPage County for 2021. And, and I think the the contamination, one of the cities in my district was like the worst of all. So we're we're going to reach out and see if we can get some kind of a program going to to make more awareness at least at the, of of contaminants in the recycling bin. So thank you, Andy. Um, can we, I have a question about that. Um, great. Go ahead, Lynn. Okay. Go ahead, Lynn can go and then I'll go after Lynn. Thanks, Amy. Um, in terms of comparison, um, have you, have we looked at other counties of our size to see um, how we compare in terms of recycling quantity? That's a good question. Um, we have not only because we, not every county actually completes an annual report in the same way that we do. However, I, I think that the state is planning on trying to implement something um, to be able to do something like that. Joy, are you aware of anything else? One of the one of the hurdles that we have that the state is working on addressing is that not everybody does it the same. Mm -hmm. um, oh, some counties um, have a different methodology that they're utilizing. Um, some counties try to incorporate some of their commercial to their benefit for the recycling side, but they're not including their waste side. So okay. the numbers are kind of all over the place. So it's it's sort of, we've kind of kept with our own standards. This is how we've done it for years so that we can compare from the county itself from year to year. Um, but the state task force is looking at actually saying, this is how you're gonna do it so that we can compare ourselves with the other counties. Okay, I would find that really interesting and especially not just simply uh, statewide, but count or countrywide, if there are certain counties in our country that again, comparable in size, um, and if they have really wonderful recycling programs, I would love to see how we compare. NACO have any information about that maybe? Uh, NACO does as well as US EPA. And we are pretty much in line with, the, with where um, the, na the national that's okay. where I think slightly above the national average. I think that national average is 30 and we're, you know, 32, 33. Okay, interesting. Good job, DuPage. We can do better, though. <laughs> Let's do better with that. Now, Chavez, you got a question? I do. I have a couple. So kind of tying in with that, you know, I 
have lived in DuPage County for seven years, but prior to that lived in King County, Washington, the state of Washington for 14. And one of the things that they had there was we had a huge recycling bin and a little tiny trash can. And um, it made a huge difference and how you thought about your waste because you were forced to. You just didn't have room in your garbage can to put everything. So it really um, forced you to have certain behaviors when it came to waste. And when I got here, I had a huge recycling bin and a huge trash can. And I thought, wow, how am I ever gonna fill that thing? But you do get a little bit lazy at times when you have a huge trash can. And I do think that if we can start to think about ways that can influence behavior in small ways, um, I don't know if that's something that the county could you know, promote. I don't even know how we begin to look at a project like that, but I do know that it hugely influenced my behavior um, when I lived in a different region of the country. So that's just an idea. I love the food waste. I think that's something that we have completely missed out on here as well. I know that in other parts of the country, you know, they can really incorporate that. So I'd love to see that become an initiative as well. And then, uh, oh, lastly, was just on page 12 of that report, I was shocked to see how incredibly well Naperville had done in their electronics recycling. They were so much farther ahead in terms of pounds of recycling, it almost seemed like it could be an error in the report, but I was wondering if you all had some ideas on why Naperville was doing so well with electronics recycling and maybe how we can help other communities that they have more events where people could turn in electronics. I just wasn't sure of the causation of that. Do you know? Um, sure. Naperville is actually open Monday through Friday. Um, the only other site that is similar would be the Burr Ridge site. Um, okay. They are open Monday through Friday as well. Um, one of the reasons Naperville is extremely popular is, you know, that it's, A, it's what, you know, the largest city uh, in the county. And then because it does, we, we do not limit it to DuPage residents. We allow it, to, uh, Naperville paying, any DuPage resident uh, can also utilize the facility. Um, so it is, I've, I've been there. It's it's busy, and it is busy all day, every day. They they are hopping. So I think it's um, partially access. Uh, partially, they're doing a you know, it's a large city. So, um, but yeah, okay. the number is the number is correct. <laughs> Okay, good. Well, that's good news. But I just wonder, gosh, can we find ways to or to um, duplicate what's happening in Naperville in some of the areas that maybe don't have those sorts of numbers, and maybe we identify one or two, um, you know, you know, areas that are a little bit low, like just you know Glendale Heights or Addison or something, where we can say, hey, can we throw some resources their direction so that they can have the same success? So I just thought that was a really interesting chart. So thank you for that. Oh, sure, and and just. So the committee is aware. Yeah, um, Addison Township is a, a quarterly, actually we do it three times a year. Bloomingdale Township is three times a year. Burr Ridge is, again, is the Monday through Friday. Um, Elk Grove is Monday through Friday at their eWorks location that we just reopened during COVID. Um, Elmhurst is quarterly, Lyle is quarterly, and Wheaton is monthly. So that's why the numbers look a little bit skewed is, um, is the timing. Um, and we got it. Well, and they're really doing well if you consider it's quarterly as well. I mean, those actually are really big numbers considering they're only dropping off quarterly. So once you put that in perspective, but um, more access may help too. So absolutely. Thank well, you. Welcome to member uh, uh, Chaplin and member Pachowski who have joined us this morning. Thank you. Uh, any yes. other questions about the, the waste and recycling report? Alrighty, moving on to the recycling event toolkit. Sure, good morning. So the toolkit, it's still in draft form, but we did want to bring it to the committee uh, just to take a look at and get your input. Um, Skiers provided the bones of this as part of our 2020 contract with Skiers. We took it, um, added some things, um, added some other county things that we've seen. Uh, again, it's still in draft form. We'd love some input if you had any, if you had a chance to take a look at it. Scarce has provided their input, so before it is finalized, there will be some corrections and changes. Um, and, but this, the purpose of this document is to reach out to not only communities, but also um, I, I know Scarce has worked with a few churches and, and community groups, is just to kind of get on paper, um, make it simple for folks to go through, understand, and be able to host their own recycling event um, on their own. 
Great. Anybody have any questions about the uh, toolkit? I just like to comment that I thought it was really well done. I think that the detail level that goes into this sort of thing that really gives people a how-to of the specifics of how to run an event and what volunteers should be doing. And often we miss that level of detail. And I thought that it was really spectacular that they went to that level of detail to make it really easy for our communities to implement this. So thank you for your efforts of getting down to the nitty gritty. Thank you, Member Chavez. I'll second that. Uh, our partnership with Kay and Scarce is, uh, is a great thing for our whole county. Um, moving on to presentations from our educational partners at Scarce. Okay, you there? I'm here. Just trying to get ready to share the screen. All righty. Oh. See. Hey, Joy, can you um, show Kay's video? I think you stopped it. Uh, Michelle, do you? She can start her own video. Um, I got it. She said that she needs to do it on her end. There you go. Just bring in the tech person. <laughs> you can see your presentation, Kay. There we go. Hi, everybody. Good morning. Um, so this is the report that we were going to have um, for March and the, we had um, Sean cast in there so I didn't get to do my program so um, when you guys are talking about educating residents, our most popular webinar and workshop is downsizing and decluttering, but getting back to the basics of recycling. Um, we held three in, the, in January and February, we had them in March and we have them scheduled again in April. During COVID, everybody is cleaning organizing, downsizing, eliminating. Um, our drop-offs are actually incredibly increased here. So we are able to help a lot of residents with this. Bev, can I share or how do, how do we move this forward? I don't know how to move it forward. This so you guys just a second. Yeah, she's in she Okay. So um, these were some of the programs that took place in uh, February. Um, our energy bike has been, we had some volunteers from Downers Grove that redid our energy bike. It is so old, it was wearing out. So several electronic engineers redid that for us. So we're able to work with um, many more students and help this last longer. How do, where do I click Bev? Oh, got it. Um, I'm hoping that some of you have been to the recycling, our new uh, education center. Uh, come and see it. We were thrilled to get some grants from the DuPage Foundation, from the McCormick Foundation. We can now socially distance completely. We had 21 scouts here um, and they each had their own table. They each had their own supplies. The Brownie leaders, scout leaders, garden clubs are coming to check it out to see that we are socially distanced. And we have doors, huge doors to this facility, this part. So there's plenty of air moving around. We're really, we're really thrilled. Um, Teacher Institute Day, that's the last Friday of February every year. We had, um, I think, 76 teachers involved in that day. High school was one session, middle school was another, and then grade school was another. Um, and so we were, oh, 75, we actually had 76 on. Um, and so we, we put workshops in three breakout sessions, but then we also had full sessions. So it was very, very popular and we felt really good about the, the workshop. Um, Beyond the Basics is that other workshop I was talking about, and this is what's become so um, very, very popular so that people can get down to the nitty gritty. You guys might have seen some of the commercials on TV now. Geico has a commercial where they're flattening the cardboard before they put it in the recycling bin. Um, the pop bottle industry and water bottle industry has a commercial telling you put the caps on and they show you with the caps on, they show you how it's put into little pieces to make new bottles and they're calling it every bottle back. So that's been very successful, I think, in making sure we get those lids and that they're on instead of loose so they don't become litter and we can recycle those. I think we're going to see more commercials like that. Um, we've been helping a lot more organizations decrease their, um, <laughs> their waste. Um, Marshalls and Lombard delivered a whole bunch of hand sanitizers and masks, and we were able to get those uh, with the help of Liz and Sheila and others to uh, township offices. Um, the organization in Naperville, DJK Custom Homes, they're tearing down the Little Friends buildings 
protecting the mansion, but they, there was so much stuff left there. Um, we were able to get the Restore there, that's based in Naperville, there's one in Addison as well, to come and get refrigerators and air conditioners and two truckloads, basically, of things. PADS was able to pick up um, brand new um, disposable paper cups and disposable dishes for the people that need to be able to take food away from the PADS and eat on their way. Sharing Connections um, got desks and tables and chairs and um, all kinds of things, silverware, dishes to help people set, get them set up in their homes. District 58 in Downers Grove, we were able to rescue for them 32 desks for students, they got those. Uh, District 25, which is West Chicago, Carroll Stream, they were able to get tables that we were able to rescue. Everybody couldn't come at the same time, you guys. They're going to tear down those buildings. They have a limited amount of time to build the 41 um, row houses. So they contacted us and we were able to rent some trucks, borrow some trucks, notify as many groups as we could. And then we rescued stuff for the groups who couldn't come, who couldn't mobilize that quickly to rescue thousands and thousands of pounds. And that's one thing Joy and I have talked about is how could we possibly ever quantify how many thousands of pounds are rescued at some of these events and as well as how many organizations these things went to. Um, right now we're, we've been working with Sheila on a house in um, Warrenville where they, the sheriff SWAT program, they rescued at least 3000 books um, that don't have to go to the landfill. And so it's diverted from the landfill. If nothing else, everything will be recycled. If we can rescue some of those books, that will be an important part. But mobilizing quickly, a lot of times these demolition um, operations are, you know, you have 24 hours kind of notice. And you have to get in and get out and rescue those resources for as many people as we can help. Um, so it's really important. We've been working really hard on the contaminants and these three pictures on our Facebook and we use them in our workshops. So the first one with the laundry basket is one taken in Wheaton with a laundry basket that's not recyclable, a styrofoam cooler, which is not recyclable. And I hope a bag of recyclables, maybe it's garbage, I'm not sure on the top. The second one was taken in Glen Ellen with a, a wicker basket, a bookcase and unflattened cardboard. The third one was in Willowbrook with at least flattened cardboard, but you aren't really sure what's in there because there's so many bags of plastic. So um, it's been really interesting as we work with people and Sheila attended with us the um, Wooddale uh, Earth Flag Ceremony. And the city attorney said to me, he says, Kay, since your presentation, I don't put plastic bags in my recycling bin anymore. Sometimes you just need to actually hear it from somebody almost face to face, but contamination is something the city's residents, businesses, haulers are concerned about. So um, I don't, I couldn't hear everything. I'm not sure if Joy shared, but I serve on the state of Illinois Materials Management Advisory Committee, and I am chairman of the Education and Outreach Subcommittee, co-chair with an EPA staff person and myself. Our committee has actually finished our report um, to that committee, but talking about statewide, when you're talking about what's going on in Seattle and the food scrap composting, I wrote that law for food scrap composting for Illinois. Lake County has more towns than we do with food scrap composting, but we're happy to get Westmont and now Warrenville will start May 1st. So we are moving ahead. Even though towns have food scrap composting, residents really don't understand what that all means. And so we are working uh, really hard to have more residents understand that they even have that opportunity and that committee is looking at Florida, Michigan, Washington State, things going on in Oregon, California, um, some really good ideas in Pennsylvania, and bringing those ideas all together. So you guys, I wanted to just share a few things. Um, Wheaton Christian uh, received their earth flag as well as Wooddale, the city of Wooddale, and Sheila was able to be at both of those. Wheaton Christian Grammar is actually in Winfield and they are the only school with geothermal. So that's pretty cool. Um, somebody's helping me fix this. Okay, good. <laughs> um, we have our Get Your Garden Growing Green market coming up May 1st and we'll be educating people about all kinds of things for safer gardening and we'll be selling our food scrap amended compost that's been donated. We have um, 20 towns 
with recycling extravaganzas already set up. I'm thrilled to see Wheaton's is this coming Saturday. The following Saturday, Addison is doing their second. We just did one with Addison in November, but it was so successful. We are doing another one. Now that one's limited to Addison rest, uh, residents, but we'll be doing that coming up the following Saturday. And that's the same Saturday as Glendale Heights. So we've got 20, everything from Walker Elementary in Clarendon Hills, Itasca, the Woodridge Rotary, Wayne Township, Villa Park, another one in Woodridge. And then this year, Jim Durkin is hosting. He usually hosts it in um, Burr Ridge, but this year he's hosting it in Western Springs. So that'll again help the Hinsdale, Oak Brook, Clarendon Hills, Burr Ridge residents have a close place to drop off lots and lots of things. Um, and then finally, we have our native plant sale coming up in Wheaton. It's our 21st year. It is completely native. Trees, shrubs, um, grasses, um, sun plants, water, uh, gar rain garden plants with experts there to answer residents' uh, questions. It is the only um, native plant sale that is not a fundraiser. It is the cost of the tree and the transportation. So our trees, some of them six feet tall and they're $25. So it is just the cost. And the goal has always been since we started this to be an education piece, to get residents to try a new plant, a new fern, a new kind of shrub, service berry or something, and then see the benefits of that. And by having it just the cost of the plant in transportation, we have a huge turnout. We're usually at least 50, 70% sold out in the first hour. Um, and it's thousands of plants, but this is our 21st year. So we're really happy. And then you guys should know that Sheila has been coming to the Wheaton um, Saturday events. And if any of you want to come and um, <laughs> get ready to work on a Saturday really hard, unload 260 cars, 300 cars, whatever, we pass out handouts like the um, February meeting or the March meeting. And I can't remember. I think it was February. Um, it was March. We collected 1,750 pounds of textiles that very next month with the new flyer that Joy has on textile recycling. Residents are thrilled to know there's a place to take their towels and so forth. So there are a lot of really good things going on and I'm thrilled to get two more towns with their food scrap composting. Um, so there's a lot of really good things. Come and join us uh, and uh, let me know if I can help you with anything with recycling in your town. Or if you hear of a project where there's gonna be a demolition Boy, if we have a little more notice, we could rescue more resources and we could help more not-for-profits benefit from those items. I don't know if you guys see our newsletter, but the Ripples newsletter will be coming out for April any minute. And the Green Bulletin came out last Friday and we're listing all these upcoming events and opportunities for residents in April and in May. Um, and I hope that you can come and see our education center. So that's all I have, you guys. Sorry I talked so fast. That's okay, Kay, you've got a lot to tell us. So we're always happy to listen to whatever you've got to say. Thank you for being with us this morning. Um, next on our agenda is old business. Anybody have any old business? Seeing none, next, any new business? Any new business? All right, seeing, hearing none, I'll move for adjournment. I'll move, second. Thank you, can I have a roll call please? Member LaPlante? Aye. Member Pachowski? Aye. Vice Chair Chaplin? Aye. Yeah, I'll be opt in and back up. Aye. Member Hart? Same. Member Chavez? Aye. And Chair Redland? Aye. And with that, we are adjourned. Thank you, everybody. Thank you.